Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. You know, time flies when you're having fun. And uh, we that. are having fun. So. <laughs> you sounded so serious. We are Time having fun. Well, you know, you know, our, fun. Our next guest, uh, I've known for a good while, a uh, great realtor with uh, Keller Williams uh, Premier out in Katy, Tim Swaker. Welcome. We, uh, we welcome met at the, the uh, same barbershop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, gotta tell you, you. <laughs> I, I feel cooler just for being here. Yes. <laughs> well, you're, yeah, your coolness level yeah. has gone up. Oh, like, at up. least, yeah, You're probably yeah. hovering around a nine and a half now. I, yes. Absolutely. I, I I actually have some earring stories, but again, not appropriate for radio. <laughs> All those you know realtor sites that measure your you know online Coolness. status and all that sort of thing, clout. No, you just you your scores have already shot way up. Just the fact that I have a haircut like yours. That, yes, yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Well, you know, you know, one of the things that you see, you know, and and I tell everybody, you know, Tim is one of the top agents within the Keller Williams, Katie. Uh, area and 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 what's amazing is everyone knows him because of one of two things. Number one, the image that he portrays associated with your cards, your logo, etc. Number two, the great car you drive around. <laughs> it's funny. The car actually gets me out of a lot of tickets because I I do get pulled over for driving quickly sometimes. It's see Tim sell your home fast, and I see Tim sell your home eventually. We do everything fast. So when the officer occasionally pulls me over for speeding, they usually ask me. Um, they go, "Sir, do you know you're speeding?" And I go, "Are you sure it was my car?" And you know if you can make an, <laughs> if you can make the cop laugh, you've got a, you got a chance. And our our officers are wonderful, and I appreciate them wanting me to slow down. I need to do a better job for them. I can imagine you just tell the officer, say, "I got to. You, you're looking at Tim sell a home fast. I got to get there first. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's, that is funny. Well, Tim's got a, a great reputation out there, and he's got a what I, I call it the clown card. Yes, it's, sir. It's, it's completely wrapped and right. uh, it, uh, distinctive. You can't miss it. Uh, give give us a little background, uh, Tim. Is you know how how you got in real estate how you got started and how you ended up you know building this amazing t- uh, team we um i have a, a real blessing i have just the wife of my dreams and i have this beautiful daughter and one day th- my daughter came home and she had this funny image drawn on me with my glasses and my beard and my tie and well, i was thinking about getting into real estate and i always found it funny that real, real realtors put their picture on their card and i personally didn't see a lot of value to putting my picture on my card um, so we had this really funny image drawn and my wife and I are having a conversation. I said, wouldn't it be funny if we put this ridiculous image of me that Abby drew on our card? And my wife said, that would be funny. And we called my father-in-law who was a broker and we ran it by him. And he said, that's the dumbest idea in the world. Perfect. <laughs> and if your so father, you, so if you your, knew that was the right, right thing to do. If your father-in-law hates it, you kind of got to roll with it. Absolutely. Well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you got into real estate in just In, uh, in 2005, I kind of the... Neatest thing, we haven't been in this very long. We got in at 2005, and I sold 76 homes my first year. And I remember saying to myself, well, this is easy. And, uh, <laughs> and, this is not, and then the mortgage crisis came, and then it became a little harder. Um, but it was really interesting. The one thing I found in real estate, if you really worry about money, you're not going to make any. But if you worry about putting other people's needs ahead of yours, I, you know, people get caught up in our marketing, and people get caught up in our humor, but... I think anybody who builds a good business from, you know, uh, from Grand Slam here to, to all of us in the room, you put other people's needs ahead of yours, and your business is going to soar. It's I, I would that. say the highest calling you can have in life is to be in the service of another human being, period. Absolutely. I would period. agree. And I think anyone who, who approaches it that, that way will be successful, period. Absolutely. Hey, while I'm here, before I forget about it, uh, the CTM Cell team will donate $250 to your charity. Oh, awesome. Thank Yay, you thank very you. much. That is Dude. awesome. That is really good. Well, thank you very much because, you know, one of the things we tell everybody is during this time, obviously the holidays, it's extremely important to be able to give, and uh, your donation is greatly, greatly yeah, uh, just a appreciated. Lot of Man, I forgot yes. to mention the March of Joe. Yes. The March of Joe. <laughs> the March of Joe. <laughs> <laughs> We, wow. <laughs> you know, Tim, I mean, Una Joe. Uh, Una Joe. Got a couple good foundations. <laughs> you know, and you um, you obviously sell a lot That's out awesome. there. You know, what have you seen in the market here recently? Obviously, you mentioned you got it in 2005. Great years, 2005, 2006, 2007. All of a sudden, the mortgage crisis came. You know, describe a little bit about what's been going on here recently. The most interesting thing that could happen to the market, I think, happened to it. Um, the market was literally in 2005, 2006. If you could fog a mirror, you could buy a house. You remember right. those days? I remember those days. Yep. And a lot of builders got caught with a lot of inventory on the ground. Right. 
And when the mortgage crash came, a lot of people went out of business. And I mean a lot of builders went out of business. Oh, yeah. And the builders that were left got tentative. So in 2008, 2009, 2010, they didn't know it, but they weren't building to the jobs that were being added to this market. Correct. Well, in 2011, for every 12 jobs that hit the market, only one house was built. Well, for every two homes that hit a, hit a market, you're supposed to build one house. So for every 12 jobs that hit, they only built one house, so now they're behind. Right. In 2012, for every four jobs added, they only built one house, and people go, they got caught up. No, they didn't. They fell further behind. Right. So that article came out in January of this year in the Chronicle that said, oh, darn, we're out of houses. Notice I went, right. with, I went with darn there. That yeah, nice. yeah, thank you. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and the station thanks you. <laughs> and, and when that article came out, you just saw the market blow up. Well, what people don't know is the builders hadn't caught up yet. Right. We're going to see a rush on houses for the next three or four years. The jobs are coming here faster than the builders can get inventory on the ground because they don't have enough trades. Right. So I think for the next three or four years, we're going to see a, an unprecedented run in this area. I agree. And, you know, and there was also a little bit of lack of land available for the longest Absolutely. time. The developers had stopped putting land on the, you know, or developing the land on the ground, haven't acquired any new subdivisions. So one of the things we're seeing right now is there's still, as you mentioned, there's still that little delay because now we're just now seeing the big tracks of land coming on board getting developed, uh, obviously putting utilities in, et cetera. And that, that's yeah, not a process that takes one day to the next. It's a year in the making, planning. at least some of those Companies things. like the Johnson Corp and things like right. that, they're starting to come back up. But, you know, a big part of that slowdown was lenders. Absolutely. Lenders were not lending to builders. So, oh, therefore, yeah. if they can't get money, they can't build. It's, right. it's that simple. And, they again, I can't stress, the market still hasn't caught up. Right. The right house hits the market. We don't have one or two offers. We have ten. Right. Now, there's some homes that will sit on the market a little longer because people may be a little more ambitious than even the market. But if you get your home priced right and you have power marketing behind it, if you have the right real estate professional behind it and some power marketing, you're going to sell it quick. And you mentioned pricing right. You know, one of the things, obviously, you know, you're an expert in selling homes. Right. And one of the things I always like to ask is, you know, let our listening audience know it's still important, even with multiple offers and everything everyone hears out there, right? It's still important to approach it right and to price your market and your home right to the market in which you're selling it. I think there's only three things that sell a house, and none of them are realtors. And uh, there's realtors out there screaming at me right now. It's only the opinion of our guests. And it's not right. the, opinion. <laughs> uh, the, the three things that sell your house are price, market, and condition. That's it, period. Right. Now, if you get the right realtor, he can get you more money for your house, and he's going to market really hard and help you sell it quickly, which is more money in your pocket, and get more right. for it. But those three things, price, market, and condition, a good realtor knows that you're hiring us to be the toughest negotiator and the best marketer for your house. But right. price, market, and condition are what truly is going to sell it. Yeah, but if you distill it down, it's price. Because right. if it's a slow market, but you price it cheap enough, you'll sell it. If it's in bad condition, but you sell it cheap enough, you'll sell it. So you, you really get down to very definitely a price. An ugly $300,000 house is usually a gorgeous two sixty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it work at two sixty. Well said. So yes. we're looking at, on this show here, we're talking about uh, the things that people don't think about or don't want to think about uh, during, during the, the holidays, holidays right? Well, uh, people always talk about how the market slows down, and I, I think the market has slows down a lot because people are always talking about how the market slows down. Uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. In every market, there's a, a pro and a con to right. uh, selling, and summertime has a certain pro that a lot of people are just aware of. But as a as a professional, a guy that's moving a lot of houses and all this sort of thing, people are saying, "Well, we'll wait till the spring to put our house in the market, whatever that kind of thing." Talk about that. Why is this a good time right now to uh, put houses on the market to uh, to look at buying a house, whatever? I, I think it's your life has to be getting the most for your house is about strategy, and it's thinking th things through. And we're going to have a lot of markets or a lot of jobs hit the market in January. This year, January, February, March was actually the hottest market we saw. It slowed down a little when interest rates went up over the summer. Right. So you never know what time of year is going to be the best time of year. It's going to depend on the job that's flowing to the market. I think the people who are going to get the most for the house, the best advice I could give them is think strategically. If you're going to put your house on the market in the summer, start thinking about it now. Call an inspector. We happen to have an inspector who's a wonderful sponsor of this show. Absolutely. Uh, Ashley Bowles. Bowles yes. Is, is yeah. in the house, actually. Right. Shameless plug. We, Ashley Bowles. We, <laughs> I, I highly recommend getting an inspector in your house now and, and thinking through, getting the things fixed. So when your home hits the market, it's going to be in as good a shape as possible. Start, you know, go ahead and get a realtor to come out. I, I know one, too. But have a realtor that comes out to your house <laughs> and go ahead and tell you what you need to do to get the most money possible for your house. Uh, and one other holiday tip I want to give is, like I said, it's important to be strategic, but also it's important to think things through. If you're buying a new home or have bought a new home, 
one thing people don't realize is most new homes have a one-year warranty. Right. Get an inspector to come in at the 11-month mark. Get the inspector to come in, do an inspection, and your builder's going to come in and fix everything. If you do that inspection after the one-year mark, you're going to fix a lot of things. So really think Our inspector is vigorously nodding his head yeah, in the background here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's the people who make the most money on their home really think strategically. They're yeah. thinking, I'm not putting my home on the market next week. I'm going to put it on the market four months from now. Go ahead and get the realtor in your house. Go ahead and get the inspector in your house. Go ahead and get the vendors in your house. So when your home hits the market, it's off the market in a short period of time. Right. I went to school in a small town, and when we got someone new in, in town, they were exciting because they were new. Houses are like that. You want to be the new guy or the new girl on the market, and you don't want your home to sit on there a lot while. So when it hits, it needs to be ready to go, period. And, you know, and, and one of the questions you made mentioned earlier, obviously, is you said you know, at the very beginning of the year, rates were a little low. And then they moved up a little bit. You know, I still tell everybody, and what's your opinion of this? Rates are still extremely low. They're, they're still fantastic. I, when I graduated college, if you could get anything below a 10% rate, that was fantastic. And now right. people are griping about 45 or 4.75. <laughs> you know, it, it's 20 or $30 a month. It's not a lot of difference on most houses. Um, I have an investment property that I, that I just bought, and it was one of the best things I just bought. And I could have actually gotten a lower rate on the house, um, but my – my person came to me and said, okay, we can give you a lower rate or we can kind of reverse it out and I can pay basically all your closing costs and you pay a little higher rate. Well, I know I'm only going to own that home seven years. Right. It would take 10 years to get the money they gave me in my pocket back, 20 or $30 a month. Correct. It's not about – the rate is important. Don't get me wrong. But people get caught up in that. Don't. The rates now are as low as they're ever going to be. No, I would absolutely agree. And you know, and don't get caught up on the – I told everybody also on the waiting for it right. to go back low. It's not going to go back there. The probabilities of it continuing to move up are a lot higher than any probability of it going down. I would not want – and the government d- does a lot to help set rates. I would not want to bet on what the government's going to do. <laughs> well, they're indicating I, 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 that they're not going to be buying mortgage-backed right. securities anymore. And so that's going to that's right. change the market. No, I would, I would, nev- I would never feel good waiting around for what the government's going to do in my future. So if there are good rates out there now, grab them. No, I, I – <laughs> that, a whole other show right there. Yes, yeah. no, I would agree. But, we, but you, you know, we are going to be coming up against a break right now, Tim. Let us know how we can reach you if you don't mind. It's real easy. Um, we try to make it easy to get in touch with us. 877-313-SELL. 877-313-SELL. Of course, ctimcell.com is easy to find. But 877-313-SELL is the best way to get in touch with us. And that is also C. Tim Sell. By the way, I think it's incredible. Thank you very much for the donation. $250, that's going to the Depelchin Orphanage that we're going to be doing. Would you be available to actually go down there when we do that? It's probably going to be in the coming week, maybe. We're going to present Hopefully, personally. And present everything We'd personally. We'd come. love to have you with us, by I the way. I will do my best. It yes. depends on if I'm out servicing yes. a client, I can't. But if, I, if I'm not, I'd love to be there. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it, it, the donation and, and the effort, that's awesome. me to tell you, it's truly appreciated by, by us here and everybody within that organization. So... We're coming up against a break right now, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. My heart won't let my feet do things that they should do. 